Today's demonstration is about how this uh, attached brace will help with centering. Here's the concept. You can imagine that this is my upper arm bone right here, and this is the lower arm bone right here. Watch what happens. If my arm is dead vertical, and if I move it to the correct position, notice that this is tapered, so if I were to go back here, I would be further from it, and as I come forward, it gets closer. But this allows me then to lean the shoulder away from the center and drive the heel of my hand inward. And this is absolutely rigid, so it doesn't actually have any free motion on the in and out direction. So I'm about to show how that works. And anyone can build this array for a stand-up wheel. Here's a piece of clay that I've gotten ready. It's a full-size 12 and a half pound hump. And usually what I'll do to get them so they don't pop off is I'm going to create what looks like a suction cup along the bottom edge. This pounding helps to seal the piece all the way around the edge. Then I'll put a little bit of water on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that bond right out at the outer edge. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to brace my hand like this and start at the top. And notice that if I'm braced like this, I only try to change a tiny bit of the, the, the hump at a time. So I'm just changing a little bit. Then I'll go down a little bit lower. And then I'm going to drive this back down. And notice how easy it is. This is 12 and a half pounds. And it's really fairly stiff clay, but it's because I'm only changing a little bit at a time, the amount of force that my hand sees is very low. The wheel scarcely slows at all. Because if you look at how little contact area there is, there's just that little bit of my bone on my arm. I'm not really using my wrist in the classic sense at all. So now you have piece of clay that was centered in just a few seconds. And what I'm making today, I'm making some lids. And I'll just make one and show you how I set it up. I'll do the inside opening for the first lid. And I'm going to cinch it to this, make a little, what looks like a little bowl. And as I pull it up, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to take my gauge, and I'm going to set my gauge like this, and begin sliding it in until I find the mark. And I'm going to turn the laser on, and I'm going to give the laser the setting I need to make it be where I want it to be. And there it is. So if you look right there, now there's my laser dot for this lid. Now I can continue. What I'm going to do first is split the lid so I have a flange that sticks down in the pot and one that sits on the rim. And I'll thicken this up the correct thickness, and I use my finger width as the width of the actual flange. I'll get down a little lower, and I'm going to just finish the bowl. And this is the first sample right here, and I'm watching the dot. I don't have to take my eyes off that dot, because watch, I can bring it right to the dot. And, and I'll show some an, another video sometime of how to set up a laser array. I tried to get this published on in Pottery Making Illustrated, but the editor said that he didn't think that his readership would be interested in laser measurement, which I thought was odd because they use computer-controlled kilns, they use electronically controlled wheels. Every device that we can possibly use to make our lives better and easier, they're using, and yet he thinks they wouldn't want to know how to use laser measurement. So anyhow, here's the gauge, and what the gauge now is we're going to finalize the lid size, and you can see what I'll do is since that's not quite big enough, I'm going to stretch it a little bit now until I find out where the dot has to hit this. And then I'll complete, when I'm doing the rest of the lids, I'll make sure I do a, that the dot hits there. And now what this is doing, I'll check it again against the gauge, and now it fits. Here's the fun part. You saw me using this device right here. This is, used to be made out of wood, but now I use metal. And it takes advantage of the meniscus effect. When water is confronted by a very sharp edge, you can't make the turn. So you can see the water is pooling on here. So all you do when you get ready to cut this off is you set it in here and slide it, and it cuts it right off. 